Good morning, good morning, happy Saturday morning to everybody and welcome to this week's uh, Facebook Live. We're talking, now you know your personality type, so now what? So as you hop on this morning, just um, say hi, let me know if you can hear me uh, on this bit cool Saturday morning here this morning on the Gold Coast, only because it's windy. It was quite hot during the night. So um, I'm really excited to talk about this today because I want to chat really to you guys to see how things are going since you've done that personality profile. Has it changed for you? What are the things that you've learned about yourself in this process? And of course, um, what we're going to be doing today is kind of helping you to kind of change, morning Debbie, um, kind of change things up a little. The personality profile is all about energy and motivation. It's all about keeping your energy levels and good morning, Diane. What's it like in Melbourne today? Must be a little bit chilly. Although Dad said it was lovely yesterday. No, you know, I never know when people from Victoria say it's lovely. <laughs> lovely compared to what? <laughs> um, yeah, so it's all about your energy levels. So today I'm going to look at um, how you can use the personality profile to overcome uh, self-sabotage and procrastination. We're going to be looking at how you adapt. Oh, freezing. Five degrees. Do you know, if it gets under 20 here, we get all sooky la la up here in Queensland. <laughs> I went and bought some slippers this week, which is just kind of lovely. But um, yeah, we're, we're really sooky lalas. Five degrees. Oh, dear, oh, dear. So I'm sure your blood just thickens up when you live down there. Um, and of course, at the end, we're going to be looking at how you can set your goals and intentions. Um, so what I'd like to know is um, if you are, if you've done your personality quiz and what were you? Because I'd be really interested to know. I think a few of you, I will guess. Uh, what you were and I'm just going to for anybody that hasn't um, done their personality profile I'm going to pop it in the comments box at the just underneath this if you haven't done yours already it's just fun really I mean I I really liked it um, when I did it because it just I'm just in trouble getting it up uh, okay hold on now let's just start again I'm just going to put the link in if case nobody has done it I think that's it. Seems like it. Um, and it's really fun because it's a way to kind of go, you know, um, I'm not caring for myself in the way. <laughs> Did you miss the homework task, Diane? <laughs> well, you can do it later. I've got, a, I've got a feeling I know what you are too. Um, so as we go through them today, um, you could have a little chance to, to do it and come back if you want. Um, yeah, it's all about keeping your energy levels high, motivation levels high. And the other thing that's really important is understanding how you get stressed. So each personality type gets stressed more by different things and what you need to do to release that stress for your personality type. For instance, um, as an achiever, for me, um, I, when I, if I'm stressed, you know, people telling me to have a bubble bath, I'm not gonna do it. That's not the way I do things. Um, that's not the way I de-stress. Um, whereas for a peacemaker, that's a perfect thing for them to do. So it's really about understanding what really works for you to release that stress. So if you've done the quiz, just pop in the comments, let me know what you were um, and what you are, and uh, and we can move on from there. So, Sandy, did you manage to get on? I'm hoping that you did um, uh, and do the quiz. I know you were struggling up there uh, at Gilbert River um, to get this going, but we will move forward with this today. So there are four types for those who have one specifically. I'll let you know the other four types. So um, there are achievers, our achievers who have a strong need for um, self-recognition. And otherwise, an achiever sets a very high goals for themselves. Uh, oh, you do, Debbie. That's interesting. It just annoys me. I, it takes too long to get over it. Um, achiever has a strong need for self-recognition. So achievers are always setting themselves tasks and goals to do. There, um, They like that sense of... Um, ticking off the to-do list or um, 
ensuring that they um, are, 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 are feel like they're making changes in their lives. Um, they are highly self-critical. Morning, Sandy. They are highly, highly self-critical and self-judgmental. And so that often is the thing that holds an achiever back more so than anything is that sense of criticism and self-judgment and they're a bit perfectionism. So oftentimes a, an achiever will not um, move forward until they've really got it in their heads or down on paper what's, what's perfect. And even then an achiever can often, even though they've achieved, will often find the fault. They'll find the fault before they'll learn to celebrate. In fact, as an achiever, that's the hardest thing for an achiever to do, is to really feel comfortable with celebrating because there's always something more to be doing. Yeah, Debbie, very highly critical. Um, we're, and, and we're our own worst enemy, we, because I'm an achiever, <laughs> we're our own worst enemies because we will often hold ourselves back. You know, we, we see the small flaws in things. And, um, uh, and, and, so, and then if somebody comes along and criticizes, gives us feedback, we're liable to throw something at them <laughs> because we've already done that self-criticism. And so the feedback, when feedback comes, it can be really difficult to take um, because you're looking for someone to acknowledge the work that you've done. Um, my socialisers in the group, for those who are in the group and our socialisers, you guys are that great kind of people person that comes really naturally to you. Um, being out with people, um, you're great to, to invite to a party or dinner party because you, you have this natural way of engaging people in, pers and in conversation. Um, you're also very good at organising uh, social functions um, because you have an eye for what makes people comfortable and feel comfortable. So for a socialiser, however, their biggest challenge is that their energy level drops dramatically when they don't have that social interaction. And so um, COVID's been very, very tough on my, on my socialisers. They're the ones that have really struggled through this, um, not for any other reason, but they simply gain their energy from that social connection. And while Zoom calls on Facebook and all those things are good, it's actually the person-to-person -person interaction they love. They love nothing more than meeting someone for a coffee or going out with a friend for lunch or, um, uh, networking. Socialisers are usually great networkers. And so all this time of shutdown has been particularly hard. I know for many of my clients who are socialisers, they've done a lot of introspective work, really understanding um, that it's okay to be that socialiser. The other thing about a socialiser is when it comes to goal setting, that you often put, if you, if you have a goal, you'll often put that aside if there's a social reason for a social gathering coming up. So Christmas, Easter, birthdays, all those things are very, very important for socialisers. And they actually make um, those times fun for everybody else because they have a natural way of knowing how people feel. Um, but again, they can tend to um, make friends with everybody. And then when somebody um, doesn't mm, return the favours and being as kind to them back or... Um, may hurt you, socialisers get very introspective then because they didn't see it. And some people will come along and say, I told you, I told you, and you didn't get that because that's your natural way. Socialisers naturally um, bring people into their social group. They, they love to make a big wide circle of friends. Our peacemakers. Now, this is really interesting because on the surveys that we did or in the quiz, this is coming up a lot. I'm getting a lot of peacemakers, which is really interesting. And for a lot of people, they were peacemakers and I didn't, and I went, oh, I didn't realise you were a peacemaker, but oh, now that makes all the sense in the world. Morning, Linda. Um, that makes all the sense in the world. So the peacemakers are people who require security in their lives. Um, they're not good with um, not knowing what's coming next. And so during this time of COVID, for them, it's that kind of that uncertainty around it. They've been very difficult for, my, for our peacemakers. Uh, peacemakers also need time to think. So they need time to kind of gather their um, thoughts and really think through things. The problem with that is that many times people don't give peacemakers an opportunity to talk and they will be the quiet ones that will hold back. Peacemakers, especially of everybody else, they're the ones who dislike confrontation and will avoid it, avoid it at all costs. 
um, because it's just so unnerving for them. And so uh, for a peacemaker, their boundaries are often um, overrun by others. Their boundaries, are, uh, they'll drop those boundaries quite readily because they don't want to upset people and they'll tend to give more. Uh, in business, a peacemaker will often over deliver, give way more. They're often very exhausted by people. They're the ones that need that space and time a lot on their own. Um, so on the one hand, while they've, they've probably enjoyed um, this COVID time because it's given them quiet time, sometimes the unknown is also threatening and, and challenging. And interestingly enough, in all the people who've done a quiz over the last three or four weeks, we've had one competitor, which was really interesting. That's the fourth one. <clears throat> and <clears throat> when I was teaching fitness, um, that competitors would never be in our class. Um, they were the ones that um, preferred um, competition. So they have a high need for self-fulfillment competitors. So they're very, very strong goal setters, achievement um, setters. Um, they have ideas flowing to them all hours of the day and night, but they, and they work very fast. And so the, um, peacemaker, um, competitors struggle a lot with stress, stress-related, stress-related illnesses, because what happens is that they are just go, go, go all the time. Um, very difficult for a competitor to slow down because they think anything slow is waste of time. They're difficult people to work with sometimes. I've worked with a couple of competitor bosses and they are hard to work with um, because they don't, uh, um, they're not great people, they're not great at reading people. And so I had a boss who was a competitor and, and he would just load work on top of me all the time and I'd lose the plot and he'd, he'd go, oh, well, I thought you were quite capable. <laughs> you know, that like, getting under my skin. Of course I'm capable. I'm an achiever. <laughs> so I work really hard and end up, you know, getting, losing it. So uh, what do you, Sandy? Sounds like me, peacemaker. Yeah, Sandy, I think you're kind of a little bit on both. Um, I th see you a bit of a socializer too, but a peacemaker definitely. Um, uh, so for those of you who've done the quiz and you've seen yourselves, can you see this week as you've been going through this, I know many of you um, actually took up and purchased the book, which is lovely, thank you very much, um, where you could actually see how your personality needs type. Remember, this is a need for your personality. It's not, not about behavior, not about, not about um, uh, um, anything more than just understanding where you get your energy and understanding where you are um, low in energy. What you need to do in order to to recalibrate your energy. So let's look at some of the things um, what we were going to go through today, some of the questions I was going to um, go through you today, because this is a time too where you're recognizing where you are setting up self-sabotage through procrastination in particular. Um, and that comes from the different personality needs types will actually have different things that cause the procrastination, self-sabotage. Um, achievers, often because they are perfectionists, so they, they'll procrastinate because they don't feel it's right yet. You, um, achievers often do a lot of research um, and, and think a lot about things and, and are very cautious about how they present and is this right. And so their procrastination is often because they don't think it's perfect enough. Um, they will self-sabotage. Um, and yeah, I Linda, yeah, a little bit, I think too. Um, I think both. I think I think I see achiever in you, but but yeah, it could be. Remember, um, interesting enough, what it is, it's a before I go on about procrastination and self sabotage, let me come back to that. It's a quadrant. So it, it's a quadrant. So it's a on the top we have achiever and socializer, competitor and peacemaker. And as your needs are being met, if you're kind of well balanced, let's put it that way, which always makes people laugh, um, you actually move closer so that really there's probably an aspect of all of us in each of the personality needs types. So for instance, um, a person who's an achiever at the moment, who's answering the questions right in this COVID-19 crisis time, could actually in fact be showing up more as a socializer because the we all have need for social connection, but it may be that you're not getting that and so it's moving more to a bit more socializer. 
what was really interesting, I had a client of mine who showed up as a peacemaker, but when we actually went through it, she is actually more of a socializer, but has learned over the years to pull back and be quieter, being told all the time she was too loud. So in the, in the quadrant, you actually have the needs that kind of sit. So there's a little bit of an achiever, a little bit of a socialize, a little bit of a competitor, a little bit of a peacemaker in all of us. But as our needs are not being met, we move further out onto the quadrant. And that's when we're right on the extreme where our needs are not being met. Um, that's where we struggle mostly. So for instance, as an achiever, let's, let's, use, let's use an achiever. For, no, let's use a peacemaker. Let's go peacemaker. So if a peacemaker is really out in the... Um, Right now, for instance, say you're working in a very busy organisation, uh, you might have uh, a lot of people coming uh, to you asking lots of questions, but you may be um, uh, in an organisation where normally you're quite quiet, but right now you've got a lot of people coming at you. Your needs for peacemaker, your needs, your peacemaker needs will be higher because you've been bombarded by people. So you will feel more that need for security, more that need for quiet time than you would normally. I hope I'm making sense. So the so socializer, you can kind of probably balance it a little bit, but right now, because there is n no opportunity for you to socialize, your social needs are not being met and they're higher. So you're feeling more stressed. So, so in an all normal situation, that you can balance all of it, but right now, if you're out in an extreme somewhere, um, that's where your needs are, you have to be very conscious of, of feeding those needs. Yeah, feeling bits of all of it, that's right. So that's where it is, Diane. It's kind of, you can feel bits of all of it, but when you're in an extreme search circumstance, more stress than normal, your predominant or your dominant need will be much higher. Um, so right now for me as Achiever, I'm really struggling with the lack of socialization. And so that's a thing that for me that I'm finding I need more, I need more connection with people. I need to, when we're doing family Zoom calls, I'm talking to the kids a lot more, all that stuff because my social needs are an extreme, but as an Achiever, that's not really my need. Because, but normally I can get it, I can balance that and go down and have a cup of coffee with somebody or catch up for a business meeting. So. When it comes to procrastination and self-sabotage, the when you when you're in that procrastination moment, the question to ask is, what need is not being met for me right now? Remember, procrastination has nothing to do with laziness. Procrastination always holds an answer for you. So a socializer, for instance, you may have a, a, a project you've got to get finished and you can't get it finished, and you kind of go, okay, what? I'm missing people, I'm missing people. Okay, take some time off, organize a chat with somebody, organize to catch up with someone. Fingers crossed our restaurants are opening this week a little bit, catch up with somebody. Find that need, you'll find you'll have more energy to do that project later on. Peacemaker, uh, if you're feeling really, you know, feeling in this uh, procrastination, self-sabotage, where are you not feeding your needs? Where are you not spending time on your own? Where are you not having quiet time? And you need to do that. Uh, so it's kind of looking at the different needs, what you need to do. That's just a guide. So when it comes to exercise, I want to talk a little bit about this this morning. When it comes to exercise, this is where it shows up more so than ever. So for exercise, it is no good telling a person with a strong need for social interaction to do a YouTube video uh, doing Pilates or uh, yoga. You might be able to do it once or twice. It is not going to feed those personality needs for you. And it's very difficult to do. Uh, it's very difficult to do. So um you actually need that interac interaction, that social connection, that walk with somebody. Um, for those of you who can't walk with anybody, a lot of my um, socialisers love plugging in good music rather than even listening um, to what's going on, so, you know, rather than listening to a podcast or something. It's actually the music that's giving them more energy. Uh, an achiever gets really frustrated if they're doing a uh, say a group exercise and nobody else is pushing themselves like they want to push themselves. So an achiever needs to have something they're achieving. So things like for them, uh, challenges, monthly challenges is a really good thing for an achiever, like a monthly 
uh, push-up challenge, uh, um, uh, challenging yourself to do, I don't know, adding you know an extra 30 seconds to your plank, whatever it is. That's what an achiever likes, because they like to see that movement forward. Um, peacemakers, um, depending where you're at in your work um, and what your day is like, I really think for peacemakers, one of the things that, that really works well for them is things like Pilates and yoga. I used to, you know, when I was teaching fitness classes, um, I used to uh, have, see, you know, we, we, where I taught, I taught in a small room. So we could only have, uh, there's no more than, um, how many, 15 people in a room. And we used to have a line of five, a line of five, and a line of five. So front row, middle row, and back row. And in those days, because it was a small room, we did a lot of turning, a lot of four steps this way, four steps that way, turn around, four steps this way, four steps that way, all that type of thing. And I could always tell my achievers, the achievers were in the front row looking at themselves in the mirror. They were working really hard. My socialisers were right in the middle because every time we turned around, they could have a chat to somebody, they could see somebody. And my peacemakers were at the back all the time, hoping to hell I wouldn't call on them to do something. And it was really interesting to watch how that works. So a peacemaker loves that quiet time. So you might like that walk on your own, uh, Diane, I see you doing a lot of that with your, your walking on your own. I think that's where you you get really kind of your energy back. As I said, yoga, Pilates, any of things of those where you're not front and center and having to, to show off to people. Peacemakers don't like that at all. Uh, competitors, they really need competition. They need um, uh, uh, things like um, challenging themselves to you know run on the treadmill till they almost drop they like competition so they like um uh um tennis rugby touch football anything like that's a great exercises golf too for competitors because they're highly competitive um any of not that you just um you know <laughs> get a lot of work out with golf but anyway you know what i mean that type of competition so is this kind of ringing true to you? I'm just going to stop for a minute and look at some of the um, comments here. They're coming through really fast. I'm not grabbing them all as fast as I can because I tend to lose my track of my conversation. Yeah, that's you. So, uh, interesting. Diane, true. Uh-huh. Sandy, I've been procrastinating big time with communication with others. Okay. So I'm assuming you're a peacemaker. I don't know whether you've done the quiz yet or not, Sandy, but if you are, um, I would look at if that if that conversation is going to um, uh, have some conflict in it or you're going to have to speak your truth or um, you know that talking to the pe these people, sometimes you can't get your point across because they'll interrupt. For a peacemaker, that's really, really hard because you, you need to just kind of gather your wits about you. The thing about a peacemaker is they're brilliant listeners. They are the listeners of the world. They make the best counsellors. And if you've got a peacemaker friend, she's the one you know you can go to and she'll just let you talk. That's a peacemaker. They make people feel so good. Um, and then you can just, um, you know, you, you make people feel good because people think you're listening and you probably haven't said anything, but you're just a really good listener. <laughs> okay, I need to set some goals. Staying fit for life is not good enough. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, 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 exactly, Kay. Um, that's interesting. Mm, well, look at that. Um, Linda, I definitely sounds more like a peacemaker. I hate being front and centre in anything, but then I do like to add time to my planks. Yeah, I would look at that. We're, we're gonna, we can look at that, Linda, because you may be... Um, in your job, um, being more called on more than usual, the stress levels may be higher in your job than usual. And that means you may be, that peacemaker part of you may need more attention. Um, that will be really interesting to look at. Uh, Janet, I'm doing yoga via online class on Facebook live. Yes. And then Annie can say hello to me and others. And I feel like I'm with the group. Yeah, that's really cool. That's perfect. That's a perfect solution. You're in part of the group. You're not just watching a, a YouTube video. That's brilliant. For a socializer, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, where did I miss? Hey, Elle. Oh, you can't open. Um, oh, I don't know. There's some people on, on mobile that are struggling to open. I don't know why. Some people have been okay. Um, but it's, yeah. Um, I'll send you another link, Elle, and we'll have a look at that. 
Tracy, can you personally change to get older? Yes, it can, Tracy. Absolutely. I would say that as I was a kid, I was more of a socializer. And as I've got older, I've moved more to an achiever. I also think, too, sometimes we, we become really um, much more confident with who we are. Like I tend to, like I'm an extrovert, but I think I'm actually sometimes an introverted extrovert or an extroverted introvert. Not quite sure which one. I think <laughs> one way around. Um, I remember for my 50th birthday party, I had huge, yeah, 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 big lots. Of, I had to ask everybody I work with. It was a great night, yada, yada, yada. One time I went and sat up, says, well, I want to go home. This is too hard. <laughs> so I think as I've gotten older, I've got a little bit more introverted. But yeah, as you as you um, uh, uh, get older, I think I think you also move, as I said, was talking before, you move more in towards um, the centre of it. Um, when I was working... Um, um, at the school, I had a lot of people all the time coming to me, you know, so my social needs were being met all day long, bang, 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 bang. So when I went home, bam, I wanted, we actually lived in a gated community at the end of a big long road. And I think that's part of what I did. I needed the peace. I needed the peace to quieten down. It was just all too much. So my socialised needs were being met, but my achievers started to come more to the fore. Um, yeah. Yeah, Debbie, you see the peacemaker visit occasionally. And I think that's where for you, you know, when you're with people all day long, um, that that aspect needs, and that's probably why you like the bubble baths on your own. That aspect shows up um, and it's understanding that. There was another, keep the comments coming because it's really, this really helps everybody else. Um, somebody else said something and it's just gone. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't know, I can't see them all on here. Uh, roll this back up. No, it's not coming up. Um, yes, I need the peace, Sandy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yes. Um, the thing is, to, what I love about this personality needs profile is that when you actually learn more about yourself, it gives you the confidence to ask for it. It gives you, for instance, peacemakers, to know that people don't give you time to speak gives you the confidence to say, stop, wait a minute, I have something to say. Instead of it being like, oh, I don't know. It's like as you as you get more confident with this and understand that's who you are. Um, so, for instance, as an achiever for me, I know that I like that self-recognition. So if Jerry uh, challenges me or gives me feedback on something, I know when I'm starting to get, mm. you know, I don't like that feedback. I'm going, this is this is the achiever in me. Okay, it's the achiever in me. Okay, I, okay, stop, just breathe. And and, I'm, and we don't have less or less of an argument. Uh, Jackie, I definitely a peacemaker, but love competition too. Love being in the front of my Zumba class. Yes, well, this is really interesting, isn't it, Jackie? Um, because you, yes, I can see that in you. Now, what you do is because you sit on the same quadrant, the competitors and peacemakers sit down the, in, on the quadrant either way and often will move that way, like competitor to peacemaker, peacemaker back to competitor, rather than the other way, like achiever will move across to a socialiser, socialiser will move across to a... That tends to be how it works. So that could be, Jackie, that you are um, feeling quite comfortable in your own space and so that competitor part of you comes out, Yeah. Yes, yeah, Sandy, get my facts right, then speak. Absolutely. Really important for a competitor, uh, for a peacemaker. They don't like being put on the spot because it takes you a while to kind of get yourself together. Peacemakers, uh, from all, the, um, from all the, the personality profiles, peacemakers are actually the ones that tend to struggle with emotional eating more than most um, because... It's like that. I just need that quiet time. I don't need anybody to. I just. I need space. You know, they're quite, just stop for a minute. I need space. Sometimes they can tend to reach for food as that calming mechanism. If you're not getting the space, so they'll reach for the comfort food. So, um, I'm finding that's coming a lot up for all my um, clients this week who are peacemakers. We're starting to get really underneath this whole emotional eating. Um, I find I'm doing that also. Not afraid to sit at the front when asked. <laughs> Yes, yes. And Linda, of course, I'm the stranger and I'm an achiever and peacemaker. I'm definitely not a socialiser. Yeah, Linda, let me, maybe go back and do the quiz again. Have a look. The thing is, uh, as I've mentioned to many people, it's really challenging at this time to be doing the quiz at the moment because of COVID. 
So because of COVID, what's happening is some of the questions, we're answering them differently because the needs are changing. So it might be, Linda, we'll, we'll chat about that and maybe do that again and just go back and have a look at this. Um, yeah, definitely, from Jackie, fine company food. Sandy, yes, yes, yes. Mm. Do you know what I think that is? It's food doesn't answer you back. And it's always there. The thing with a peacemaker, as I mentioned before, um, and I have a client of mine who blew me away when she came out as a peacemaker. I was really amazed. And then I went, oh, now I get it. Uh, because she presents as an achiever. Really interesting. You would think by looking at her, she was an absolute achiever, younger girl. And uh, when we went through this, she was the one that said, food's the only thing that doesn't put me on the spot. Food's the only thing I can rely on when I'm feeling I have no security in my life. It was, it was just such an aha moment for her. It was wonderful um, that she could get this. That's why I do that is, that, is that I'm looking for that security. And she's in an industry that's, that has no security, which is really interesting. None, 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 none at all security in this um, field work that she's in. And so that's where the food comes in. It's like that kind of, oh, I can, I can rely on this. It's here. This what makes me feel better. Uh, socializers love a party. So it's really difficult. If you're on your own a lot, you'll just blow all those great health goals out the window if you're on your own too much. Um, and you'll just love to go and sit in a coffee shop or you know have a piece of cake or get together with people with drinks. Or, that's a socializer. We love that. They love that. I mean, I used to be more of a socializer, more of an achiever now, but love that whole, you know, I'm going to go work out. Oh, oh, you want me to come for a drink? Sure. Okay, I'm coming. <laughs> so all those goals can sort of fall by the window. Uh, by the, uh, the Y side, I mean. Um, right. So let's talk about goals. Let's, let's move on to goals. Um, so when you're setting your goals and intentions, yes, we do, Janet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's, it, you just, that's, that's where you're brilliant at. You know, that, that's the thing about a socializer. They make people feel really comfortable. And so you just, it's just you're in your element in that social thing. Whereas for a peacemaker to be, you know, in the front and center and socializing and talking to people is like, whoa, I need to step back. Um, my sister presented as a peacemaker, which we thought was, I thought was really interesting. I didn't know that. And it, what came up there was for her was that she, um, uh, uh, can get to a point where she's she likes the socialization and she goes, well, that's it, I'm gone. So if we go to a party, for instance, our family was always having parties when we were kids, she would be okay for a period of time and then she'd disappear. And that was like she'd had enough. That was her peacemaker. She needs, and she's still like that today. Okay, I love that food is always there and never answers back. Yep. Yep. Always, it, always, it always serves a purpose. Food, when we, when we don't eat intuitively, it's because food is serving a purpose in some way. We don't do anything randomly, ever. Everything has a reason. Everybody does things for a reason. It's a really great thing, actually, to get your partners to do this quiz, too, because then you understand them. You understand them, and they learn to understand you. And, um, you know, that, a lot of arguments can be solved. If you kind of know well, where I'm coming from, this is where you're coming from. Really interesting. Um, so let's get back to the goals. Um, so achiever, for instance, um, when you're setting goals, my achievers, what is really important for you is slow incremental steps along the way. So an achiever's got to have, achievers work well with to-do lists, crossing them off. Uh, as I said, lot of small challenges, get to the end of the week and go, yes, I achieved that. The problem with an achiever is they set big goals. They'll set the big goals to achieve something, and if they don't achieve them, they lose motivation very quickly. They get really judgmental on themselves, and they'll just give it up. And um, you know, whether that's diet, whether that's exercise, whether that's a project of work that they want to do, whether it's write, or write a book, whatever it is, achievers really need to set those small incremental achievement goals, like seven-day goals, 14-day goals, 30-day goals, to the 90. Um, I'm not good as an achiever with a year long goal. I just lose, I just, yeah. Because I want that goal right then. I want to achieve that right now and now. Writing a book for me was a real challenge because I had to continually set my task of a certain number of words I was going to write per day, not the book. 
So when I achieved a certain number of words, that to me was my recognition. Uh, goals for socialisers, um, as I said, things like exercise must include other people. So it's no good somebody telling you to go for a walk on your own. You are just never going to do it or you'll do it and it's boring and you'll lose motivation really quickly. As I said, we're getting around it with some of my socialisers at the moment by listening to music. They're finding listening to music or as one of the others said, listening to podcasts because at least I'm listening to conversations like, and I can talk to them and they can't hear me but I'm still talking to them. So it's a way of connecting that other part of you. Um, also recognising to kind of schedule in and this um, for my socialisers, Janet, uh, in particular for you, is like that's what you did. You know, you're networking with scheduling in time. Um, and so that networking time was your social connection and, and you would feel more motivated to achieve after you've done that. So that's where you've got to kind of look at right now. Like as you said, doing the yoga with uh, live is brilliant. That's brilliant because you're part of the group. That's, that's working really well for you. Uh, peacemakers, your goals need to be, uh, it's like slow and steady wins the race for you. Um, and the goal needs to be slightly out of your comfort zone, but not as a competitor, because competitors, they, they have the big way out of comfort zone goal. Yours, in order to stay motivated, needs to be just a little bit out of that comfort zone. And you need to be balancing up for you, ensuring that you have that peace on your own, that time on your own to achieve it. Um, but, you know, I, I know peace, not just because someone's a peacemaker doesn't necessarily make them quiet. Remember, they, they could present as quite social, they're great in a group. It's just what their need is, their personality need is. So you can have a peacemaker that works well in an organisation with a lot of people, but you'll find your energy level drops really quickly. And that's where you need to bring in that quiet time, that peaceful time, that aspect of you that, that needs to regroup. Um, and also when you're setting those goals with a peacemaker, um, it's probably good for you not to share them with others um, because sharing your goals with others also sets you up for um, criticism by others. So, and you don't want to do that. You've got to be, because you don't like, a peacemaker is great, but they, they like loyalty. Um, they like um, people to be um, uh, on their team. And so if you're sharing a goal and you're not going to chew it and you're worried that you're going to be criticised or scoffed at or laughed at, don't share it. That's just your quiet goal. And, of course, competitors, pff, way up there. <laughs> the thing with the competitors when they're setting goals is to ensure that they're looking after their stress levels at the same time. So competitors really actually, more so than anybody else, really does need that time um, to do things. Now, for instance, a competitor finds meditation really difficult. So um, a, a run by themselves or a walk by themselves it helps them de-stress. De you might know competitors that go 100 miles an hour, um, but their stress levels are up here. It's like their adrenaline's pumping all the time. Competitors tend to get sick quickly and deeply. They'll get sick and they'll go down hard fast and then they'll bump back up. Um, yeah, Sandy, learning not to share goals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just because, simply because it just creates that extra added stress for a peacemaker that, that doesn't really, you don't need. You know, you, you're, you're a, you're not necessarily a quiet person, but you're just one of those people that needs that time. You know, you don't, you just don't need to be criticised. Um, achievers will get cranky if they're criticised and throw things and slam doors and yell at people. <laughs> Not talking about anybody I know, of course. Um, but a peacemaker will take it very, very internally. And that's where the stress levels rise. Remember this? Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, you do. Exactly. Sandy, yeah, self-preservation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're welcome, Diane. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is, remember, this is all about understanding you, just understanding you. And um, the relationship to intuitive eating is everything about this. Because when you understand what you need, when you learn to listen to your body and you learn to feed your personality needs, and I don't mean necessarily the food, but you know what I mean. Um, when you do that, you begin to, you can listen more intently to your intuition. Your intuition will switch off when you're highly stressed. And each of the personality needs types has different levels of stress, different levels of how we deal with it. And so 
in resetting your goals, you know, go back and look at your goals and the intentions you set. I mean, I think we all have to reset. I think we make June the first 2020 start, shall we? Um, because everything went right out of the window from January. But, you know, go back and look at, at the intentions you have for this year. Do they still honour you? Are they still where you want to head? You may have changed. And in that, those intentions you've set, have you given your personality needs time? So as I mentioned before, for me, I, you know, I, I know practically I need a to-do list. I need a, a diary. I need, I need an actually handwritten diary. I've got my calendar and online, but that's not enough for me. I need to see things crossed off the list every day. As an achiever, that's what's really important for me. I need to be organised. And that's what's really important for me. I'm going back and, and um, get buying a diary again. I've tried everything online and it, it, it's not me. I, I like the crossing things off. So look at the various ways that you can implement your personality need into the goals. Um, so for my socialisers, Janet in particular, um, ensuring that you're actually getting that social interaction each week, that's really important and daily. Um, and how, I, how am I going to do that? Because... And it's not wasting time at all. It, you know, spending time with people for a, a socialiser is what socialisers need to do. That keeps you, this, we're talking about energy and motivations. This is all about keeping your energy and motivation levels high. So when you're low in motivation, low in energy, have I fed that need today? Um, and when we're not, so... For instance, let's look at the achievers. Achievers, when it comes to food and exercise, for instance, if we can't see um, results quickly, we'll go. We'll throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, oh, it's not going to work. I can't do it. This is too hard. I'm going to go and have the block of chocolate. That's what achievers will do. Socialisers, um, it will be. I'm not spending time with anybody. You know, I don't care. I'm just going to have a little party for myself in my living room. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I'm party and I'm going to eat what I want. Um, as I mentioned before. Um, uh, um, the peacemakers tend to emotionally eat. That's where they feel not, not going to be criticised. Um, they're not going to be um, uh, judged. And that's where no one's going to, um, you know, challenge them, give them time to speak. So I'm going to eat. I'm going to stuff all these emotions down. Janet, I'm even having different conversations with checkout shop staff. <laughs> I know, I reckon these young girls on the registers have never had so many people ask them what they're doing in their lives. <laughs> oh, how are you? And is this a part-time job? And um, yeah, what are you doing? You go to university? I'm sure they're all having it. It's amazing, isn't it? I hope that stays. It's really lovely, actually, that we're actually spending time talking to all these people. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Kathy. You're welcome. Lovely to have you on the call this week. Um, yeah, so remember, this is just about your personality need. It's what you need. And um, as I said, you know, share this with your partner if you've got, or a person that you're living with, or somebody, other members of your family. It's really interesting. Uh, my three, yeah, exactly, Janet. Um, my family have all done it. Okay, I deliberately go shopping to talk to people. Uh huh, I know, right? <laughs> Looks like our daily outing, Jerry said on. Thursday, we need to get out of here. So where are we going to go? Is it shopping? <laughs> to, to Woolworths. <laughs> Have a chat to the girl with the fish. <laughs> Have a chat to the guy putting the apples in the thing. <laughs> Not buying anything other than food. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, yeah, my family did it. So all my sisters did it, and it was really interesting. It was really interesting, and we could see all of our personality needs stuff. This was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. My middle sister is the best person in the world to have at a party. She is so much fun. And people ask her places because she's so much fun. And you could just see this socializer in her. It was amazing. And my younger sister's the peacemaker and my, my sister next to me, both of us are achievers. And it was amazing to see how, where we fit in the family and what, what we love doing most and all that stuff. It was really, really fun to do. Um, yeah, so so share the the quiz. I'm going to put it in the in the link again. Uh, <coughs> oh, I'm having to relearn to type since I had my nails taken off. <laughs> oh, and um, amazing how much faster typer I am. 
Now my nails are different. Excuse me, just having a cup of tea. All right. So are there any more questions before we leave today? If you have any more questions about the personality needs test profile, if you haven't done it. Um, hmm. um, L, if you can just have a look at the settings on your phone. Um, I know there are a few people having trouble with the phone, doing it on the phone, but we ended up fixing that from our end and was able to do it. So if you can just have a look at some settings on your phone. Um, and uh, if you don't have any more questions, we will end this today. Whatever you do today and wherever you are, I know us on the Gold Coast, I know my husband is itching to go downstairs to have a cup of coffee in the coffee shop. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to sort that 10 people out, but anyway, he's dying to go down there today and have a cup of coffee. So um, restrictions are easing. Um, make sure that this, is, this time has not wasted time. Um, <coughs> whatever you've learned about yourself in this time, use this. Uh, thanks, Linda. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. That's good. That's good. Um, yep. Thank you, Jackie. Have a great day as well. And um, be brilliant this week, everybody. Be brilliant. Wise women. We need the wise women in our world right now, if ever before. Um, and stay well. And I look forward to seeing you uh, next week on the Living Lighter Facebook Live Show. We'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>